working on my DeLorean time machine. This is the Bob's Prop Shop DeLorean time machine, or what a replica, of course. Um, this is our personal car that we use for the shop. And uh, I don't know, I just thought I'd film this because we should do more video updates. Our fans want it. What am I doing, Bob? Uh, well, you know, the 1981 DeLorean has this really tiny motor. It's a V6, has a mechanical fuel injection system, basically same mechanical fuel injection system you'd find on a Porsche or Jaguar, Lamborghini, Ferrari, um, which sounds awesome, but not. And it runs on uh, a regular coil. The coil fires uh, into a distributor and that's a whole thing. If you don't know what a coil is, I can't, I don't, I, I don't have all day. What am I doing today, Bob? Well, check it out. Um, it comes with, back in 1981, a Bosch 12-volt coil. Now, this thing only puts out 12,000 volts. I say only, that sounds like a lot of voltage. 12,000 volts would like, you make me grow hair. Um, but compared to our modern day technology, this is a, uh, MSD Blaster 2, which was my nickname in, in prison. Um, this runs 40,000 volts, right? So the idea here is to try to get this asthmatic slow piece of shit to go just a little tiny bit faster so that we can get up to 88 miles an hour. Um, you know, the, I've been in that actual parking lot at Puente Hills Ball at the JC Penney's, and um, you cannot get a DeLorean 88 miles an hour in that parking lot. But maybe, maybe with this coil we can. Anyway, so, you know, this is what I was doing. And I thought, you know what, uh, here's a, a tip and trick for anybody working on stuff. Notice how these are both still connected. I did that up for a reason. The reason is I didn't want to mistakenly put the wires in the wrong way. So the easiest way to keep from screwing stuff up, like especially when you're doing plug wires, which we're also doing, Take a wire out, put a wire in. That way you don't uh, um, get them mixed up and accidentally hook it up backwards. Here's another trick. When I'm done unscrewing this, if I were to pull this socket off, that nut would fall down to the ground. So I know that I've already unscrewed it. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna screw it back on just a little bit. Just a little bit. And the idea is that, that well, it didn't work. I didn't get to use my, well, that's because it's stuck in here. There it is. But the idea behind that little idea was to put the nut on there and then take it off by hand uh, so that you don't drop it down into the nowhere zone that exists. See how I've left the nut on here? Now, another thing I noticed that was hard to get off because on the original, they didn't put a lock nut and washer on there just like they did on this one. I know you can't see because my little hands are in the way. I'm gonna put this on. It's a washer. Lock washer. I used to have a 57 Chevy wagon. Uh, for those of you who've been a fan of our channel for a long time, that was the Ecto 57 that we built a long time ago. Not much to that motor at all. And I got going down the road and then all of a sudden it just died as though somebody turned it off. And I thought it could only be one of a couple of things. And what it was is one of these little wires attached to one of these little clips had just burned off and just popped off. Now the average Joe would have been stuck calling a tow truck, but I'm video Bob. And I recognized that that wire had been popped off. And uh, I always, any, any guy that's worth his salt carries something like this at all times. Now this is the SOG. I, I should get an endorsement from these people. The reason I like this one, you notice I can operate it like a butterfly knife. I can operate it with one hand and that's very important. Sometimes you need to be able to hold something. The Leathermans, the Gerbers, they, they can't do that. Anyway, I always carry that with me at all times and uh, that has helped me a gazillion times when something like a wire has come through and I need to strip it, crimp it, pinch it, bite it, tear it, whatever. And uh, also keep something like this on you at all times. Just some kind of a knife. What I like, the reason I have a switchblade is not because I'm trying to be a badass, although I am. It's because I need to be able to open that knife with one hand, because I can't let go of this. Anyway, these are, this is why you watch, folks. So um, anyway, I just thought I'd share some content with you. Uh, working on this DeLorean, and this is not time machine specific. This is DeLorean stuff, and this is just general car stuff. Just about any old car. 
rant like this. Uh, and, you know, if, if you are a DeLorean fan, most of you probably know Knology, a company called Knology makes an electronic ignition system that replaces the coil and distributor. Those are cool, don't have anything bad to say about them, but I will say that when it comes to reliability, this old system is better. When it comes to performance, the other system is great. But I have been left out in the dirt with an electronic ignition so many times. I'm a little leery about putting one on, so I'm not talking any smack about Nology. Maybe they're great. I have a Nology actually on my turbo DeLorean, and the thing fires up and it runs like a, a, a bandit. But when something goes wrong with a distributor or coil, it's probably something really simple that you can fix with a pair of pliers. When a sealed plastic electronic ignition goes out, it's called replace it, and you can't just do that on the side of the road. So, anyway, vintage Bosch, 12,000 volt, look at that thing. And believe it or not, it ran perfect. There, really, there was nothing wrong with the car, it ran perfect. By the way, I just wanted to mention before uh, we end the video, if you decide that you want to put a higher voltage coil on your car, careful, you can't use the old fashioned rubber hoses. You have to upgrade to a higher voltage. These are silicone. These are eight millimeter silicone because now you're putting out way more spark. So if you want to make the cheap upgrade of, of, of changing out the coil, you're gonna to have to change out your wires. And while you're doing it, if you're gonna go through all that trouble, you might as well go ahead and change out your rotor uh, as well, and your cap. It, they're like eight bucks, okay? It's like two bucks for the rotor. But if you're gonna do it, you might as well do it. You're gonna be generating a lot more spark, and you're gonna be creating more carbon, so you're gonna have a better, higher quality system. And, you know, and quite frankly, if you're gonna do that, you might as well change your plugs too. See how this $50 coil turned into $300 worth of shit? This is what happens on these cars. <laughs> because then, see, now you're getting more spark. More spark means you're using more gas. More gas, bigger explosion. Uh, more. You mean burning more gas? Yeah, it, yeah. it explodes. Yeah. You know, when it explodes, you're burning more gas. There's more gas going into pushing the piston down rather than going out the tailpipe. And, and, and if I can get just this much more out of this crappy little 130 horsepower motor, I want it. I know, I'm talking shit about the DeLorean. But hey, listen, I drive a Cadillac CTSV everywhere. It's 600 horsepower and goes 200 miles an hour. When you get in this thing, it's just like... <clears throat> Sorry, Michael J. Fox. These bastards can't do 90. Anyway, I'm Video Bob. Thanks for watching. Come to Bob's Prop Shop. Make sure to subscribe to our videos and go to Bob'sPropShop.com. You can watch our live webcam, which the people who are watching the live cam webcam right now we're watching us filming this right now that could have been you all right catch you later i gotta go back to work i gotta put this thing back together